Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a special edition of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And in today's episode, we have a bit of a mini documentary where we document the journey to black belt of someone that I have come to respect a great deal. And instead of putting a whole bunch of stuff in the front here to set the tone or distract or uh, give you expectations, instead, I'm just going to let you watch or listen. And in fact, there is video of this. And of all the episodes that we've done, this is one of the ones that I think stands up most in video. So if you are used to listening to our shows, please consider watching on YouTube. Hey Sue, thanks for coming. Hi. On. You're welcome. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. This is going to be fun. We I want to thank you for your trust in us presenting a poorly defined idea <laughs> that we wanted to do. <laughs> Say, hey, here's a thing we've never done. You don't know us, but we want to do it. We want to, we want to feature you in this, in this undefined, not yet done thing. And you said, okay. So I don't know what that says about you or us. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it says other than um, I think the last seven years of karate have told me um, to just, if, if an opportunity comes up, take it. Mm. Try. Yeah. Try. Yeah. <laughs> now it, it, at this point, when we get into the conversation, you know, we'll, we'll have an intro that listeners will hear ahead of time, but we're talking today and we'll be talking a few more times because you'll be testing for your black belt. Yeah, absolutely. We have a, we have a provisional rough date set in of September this year. Yeah. We're, we're talking today. It's July. It's early July. Yeah. And so that was the, that was the idea was let's talk to somebody about the journey leading up to and into and coming out of black belt testing. And we thought, you know, you're, you're a pro on the microphone. You're, you're part of a show that, that Andrew shared with me. And I was like, man, these guys are killing it. <laughs> so we thought, nice <laughs> we thought, Hey, let's, let's bring Sue. Let's, let's ask Sue if she'd be willing to share a bit of her journey. And, and obviously you said yes. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Wouldn't say no to this. It's amazing. Seven years. You've been training for seven years. Yeah, it's about that. I started at the end of 2015, at the okay. very end, in about November, um, when I was totally procrastinating on a on a challenge that I was supposed to do. I'd given myself something to do, and I was um, procrastinating like mad. And the idea just came straight into my head: look for a karate class. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I'd had a really quick dalliance with karate um, when I was 19 and okay. I was a nanny back then. And again, I just like had the idea, go try karate. And I sucked at it. I mean, I was really bad, but I enjoyed it so much. It just how, how long did you do it? Oh, I don't know, maybe three months. Okay. And then I changed jobs and I left the area because that's what it is to be a nanny. You just leave. Sure. And I never carried on. And then so at the end of 2015, like well into my 40s, this idea just came along. So I found a class and I went and it was it was so good. It was, was it, so hard. Was it really good. that the word that's coming to mind is frictionless, that, that idea of we should give karate another try. And then you did it. Was it really that fast Pretty and much. that easy for you? Yeah, I found a class that was on within a handful of days and I just went. Okay. I went. I just thought to myself, you know what? I'm terrified. But I, mm. there's something about this that I just want to go and do. I thought, you know what? I do not have to do this. If I don't like it, I can leave. 
And actually that thought was in my head for the next two years, constantly. Every time I was sweating, hurting, running out of breath, getting hit, that thought was always there. I don't have to do this. You don't have to stay, Sue. If you don't like it, you can go. And I was like, nah, nah, no, to hell with that. I'm going to (laughs) stay. Why did you stay? What was it about what you were experiencing despite the sweating and getting knocked around and whatever else that we, you know, cause we all experience these things, you know, martial yeah. arts and the way we train it. If, if you really get down to it, it's kind of ridiculous. If you pull out any of these individual pieces of what we do, none of them sound fun. No, none of it sounds but yet fun. They I are, when, especially when it's all put together. Yeah, so it is. why, why for you? I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard for me to explain. I think there was something in the personal power that I felt learning how to hit things and hit people and dump them on the ground and just the sheer delight that I took still take in managing to do something that hitherto would have been almost impossible to me that just the thought that I can do this I would go home like so tired and think oh my god I did that I actually did that and I still get that feeling whenever I have a good class or finally managed to get a takedown on someone finally Mm. um that feeling is intensely it is just delight you know where this coming to mind for me is empowerment that is well yeah I mean that's a big buzzword but yeah empowerment absolutely that I did that I can do that I stood toe to toe with a black belt and I held my own that was the first time I did that was insane. The first time I did that with like a 14 year old boy, it was insane, you know, because they would be fast and they would be strong and aggressive. And I'd be like, oh my God, this is so hard. Mm-hmm. And yet you go back and you do it again. And just that progression, that feeling of I'm, I can do this. And I mean, oddly enough, I never wanted to grade. The first conversation I had with the, um, the karate instructors, I didn't know how it worked. I'd just seen a whole bunch of movies, not even martial arts movies, but I just wanted to be able to do that, you know, like be that guy in the thriller, you know, not that I wanted to, you know, I just, I just love that being able to like get into a fight and deal with it. Just everyone has an idea in their head, don't they? And so when I went in, he said, what do you want? What do you want from this? And I said, I don't know. I just want to be really good at this, but I don't need to grade. I don't need to do exams or anything. And he explained very patiently without laughing at me that that's not how it works and that I would be grading. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, then I guess I'll grade. <laughs> and just carried on. I just carried on. Now, you mentioned for the first two years, you had in the back of your mind that you might or could quit. What happened at two years? Um, that's an arbitrary time frame, to be honest okay. with you. That thought still occasionally comes up when something's uh-huh. really hard. I just remind myself this is a this is an option, this is a choice. Don't have to do this. Um, and it's always that stubborn part of me goes, No, 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 I'm not gonna quit now. No, no, no. <laughs> I am there- going to get this, whatever it is that's g- causing me that problem. Um, you know, I choose not to be defeated by that. I know now that I can take as long as it takes to get it. Back then it was incredibly frustrating. It's still frustrating, but now there's a part of me that knows it's okay if it's going to take another six months to be able to master that thing. It's fine. So it doesn't matter. So, I mean, I don't really know how long people normally take to get to black belt, but it was never a goal. Never. It was just even 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 just you know a little while ago just before you were told you will be part of an upcoming when I'm testing told, yeah when I'm told I'm gonna do it I want to do it well okay. I always want to do it well I always want to feel like I've earned it when I do a grading I want to know that I've earned it that I deserve it that I'm there but actually the belt is not the goal the goal was always to be good and I know that's a horrible goal because that's so mushy but I I I can't describe it any other way. I just want to, I guess, be able to go toe to toe with somebody and do a really good job. That's the only way I can explain it and feel confident about it and know that I can do it. And that's always been kind of the goal. 
the mm. belt is is it is an honor to me that the people I train with that Greg and Joe tell me that I'm ready for this and I've always just trusted that they tell me I'm ready for a belt I'll do what they say that's fine I trust that completely I trust them um but I'm there was that train. always I'm, in the case, like early on, you know, because you came in not mm-hmm. caring about yeah. grading or rank when, when they said, I, I would assume your first rank would have been yellow, yellow belt? Uh, no, it didn't. doesn't work quite that okay. way in our clubs. Uh-uh. They, they all have slightly different patterns, don't they? I think the first one for us is, um, oh, it's either red or orange, I think. Oh, okay. okay. It, it, they all vary. We've, we've discovered just that there's no... Yes particular yeah, consistency it's, across it's, different it's clubs. all over it's all over the place all over the place so yeah. that that first whatever that first promotion would have been you you trusted even from then you just said okay I, I, yeah if you tell me that this is what i've got to do i'll do that is that your nature or does this say something about these two gentlemen um well in that very first one that was jeff who okay. who had that club um and i just i guess i didn't know any better but I've, um, so they said, this is what's going to be happening. You're going to do this thing. So, all right, then I don't really want to, but okay. <laughs> do you feel good? Nope. You feel confident? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was always, I was, oh dear, it's not good, is it? But um, I, and I would do it and I would always do, do fine. I would always do fine because I would really prepare for it. I just always wanted, if I was going to do this thing, wanted to do it well. So I'd put a lot of time and effort into practicing and training as hard as I possibly could so that I could get through and, mm. you know, do everything that was asked of me. Now, I, I imagine as, as you moved up through, are, are, you, a, are you a brown belt? Is this, is this how you I'm guys do a this? first cue, so I'm brown yeah. and brown with two white stripes okay. in our club. Yep. First Q, EQ, a lot of places we call it in Japanese. So I imagine as you, re- as you stepped into that rank, you've got years of history. Mm-hmm. You probably aren't thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to just stop doing this at this point, which sadly a lot of people do. They stop before Black Belt. Mm-hmm. But you, you likely knew at some point coming soon, someone was going to tell you, you will be testing for Shodan. Mm-hmm somewhere in the near future yeah did you think about that I just I try not to because I in in my mind always even though I know it's not completely true in my mind a black belt looks a certain way sounds a certain way and can accomplish just about anything it's like a ninja you know a black belt to me has always looked like a guy who is super fit, who can do just about anything. So for me, coming up to being a black belt over 50, by no means amazingly, amazingly, amazingly fit and definitely not able to do everything. There's a huge, huge element of, yeah, but I'm not one of those people. I don't look like that. I don't sound like that. So that's definitely a part of, of me is still really doubting that this is even possible. And I, that's always been the case. I, I feel like I've been told I'm going to grade. I've practiced for it, done it, done the work, achieved the grading. And then about six weeks later, I feel like I am that grade. So I feel like I've settled mm-hmm. into it. In, in my head I feel like I've become that great so I imagine that this is going to be a very similar thing they tell me I'm ready they tell me I'm ready now I just need to learn some extra things to to go through the grading um it doesn't feel that way but I'm guessing that by the end of the year I will feel like it's real <laughs> if that makes any sense at all um it does. I don't it know does. if anyone else fe- does did you feel like that do other people feel like that? Yes. Really? I, I, I can't. So the way, the best way I've heard it articulated in, I think I'm comfortable saying most, not all, but most martial arts schools. 
And we're talking about ones where people are not tested on a fixed schedule. There are schools that will, you know, every three months or six months, everyone tests. And the idea being there are going to be a lot of failures because you don't know your stuff yet, but in, but there, there, there are all kinds of different ways to look at rank and testing within the martial arts. Most karate schools I'm familiar with do what it sounds like your school is doing in that testing occurs based on an instructor saying you are designated to test, you are ready to test. Yeah. And the way I've heard it expressed, you are given the opportunity to test when your instructor knows you are ready for your next rank. Mm -hmm. You pass when you know you are ready for your next rank. Oh, yeah. Right. And it, it's often hard to see that as you're coming up through the ranks, but as you look back, when you get to sit on testing boards, when, when I watch people moving up through, I can look and I can say, that person knows where they're at. They know they've put in the hard work. They know they deserve this. Mm -hmm. This other person thinks they do, but they really don't. And here's someone who hopefully will come to realize that they do, right? So you've got a, a, a few different ways that that can manifest. And I would much rather, if I, if I had to pick, if I had students and I had to pick, you know, I, I, of those three mindsets, the one I would much rather have are the students who don't think they're ready because they're the ones that are going to work the hardest generally mm. because they're trying to reach a standard that they don't think they can achieve. Mm. Now that doesn't happen that way for everyone. Sometimes they don't think they can get there and they get disappointed or frustrated and they quit. And that really, that's a bummer. And then you've got others who are incredibly confident and continue to work hard because they love what they're doing and, you know, they do great, but just as a general rule, if I could pick between people who know more than they think they do or less than they think they do, I'm going to take the people who know more than they think they do. Mm. They don't get themselves into trouble and they keep learning and they're generally there for the right reasons. And it sounds like that's what you're describing. But yeah, I think it is. I think it is what, what you're describing because I will work to make sure that I've, I don't make it, I don't do it wrong on the day. Mm. And I know it's not about the day. It's not about the test. It's actually about everything that came up to the test. It's really about that. And then what happens afterwards? The test is like a confirmation of what they, just, just proving what you know, really. Um, but it's so interesting that you say that because years ago, I was really hard on myself one day. And um, I was, we were finishing up a class and I was about to leave and um I was saying, oh, I'll never get this. I so, did so badly today. And I just remember um, Greg was talking to Brad at the time and he said, you know, you're better than you think you are at the moment. And I was like, really? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that was like, oh my God. Well, then maybe I'm not seeing what I'm doing properly. Maybe, maybe they are. So that was, and that was a kind of a revelation of, of confidence for me. It's like, mm. okay, right. I'm not just at the back sweating all on my own. There are people actually paying attention and saying, yeah, they, they, they know where you're at. So, okay. Yeah. It was, it was quite a big, that was, that was a big moment for me. Say a little more about that. Did that change the way you approach training or um, how you felt about yourself or anything? Yeah, I think I think that kind of of just realizing that people are, you know, you can spend a long time when you're a low belt, you know, at the back of the class, struggling, trying to copy people, trying to figure out what on earth it is that you're doing. And maybe you're not getting a lot of feedback, maybe, you know, in a big class, it's not always possible, is it? And and then when somebody actually um, takes a moment to tell you that they are seeing you work and that they can see that you're improving that just for a moment it just lets you feel seen it's like mm. okay I do exist and I am progressing and yes, that's all good 
I'm not just toiling away in the background. And I think it's it's the same for for both of them, for for Greg and Joe, that they both pay so much attention to how people are doing. They give feedback, a lot of feedback, especially these days um, in the classes to all the students about how they're doing. You know, they're, they're free with the paying attention. You know, that was a great kick. I saw that. Well done. You, you know, it's 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 constant. And you can see people just shine when they get that like yeah I did that well so when there's a lot of a lot of feedback coming you know it's like that was a really good kick but hold on just one second let's just correct that Ooh. there you go and it's um it's a method of teaching that is um it never makes you feel bad so you can be corrected all day like that and you'll take it happily mm. because you're getting you know it's not Hey, we think you're great. That was terrible. But hey, you're still great. It's not a not a you know the sandwich. You know what I mean? They're like compliment, insult, compliment. It's like you're doing really well there. I can see that. Just want you to correct this one thing and then move on and keep keep working. So it's it's a method of teaching that I think is extremely um, supportive, beneficial. You know, I like it. It, it sounds like. And, and I'm sure, you know, everyone's inferred that these, these two gentlemen are your instructors. They mm-hmm. are the ones overseeing you. Uh, and, and I want to hear a little bit more about each of them in a moment. But what I'm, what I'm kind of reading between the lines is that your personality of wanting to be able to trust the people guiding you so you can just kind of put your head down and focus and do the work is really... Um, that works because of the way they're teaching, because they are providing you feedback. They're giving you the, the safe, you're, you're feeling safe and comfortable in your training so you can trust the process. Is that, is that a fair statement to make? Yeah, I think that's a fair statement to make. I mean, it's also changed, you know, over the years. I mean, Jeff's class was, um, in, in some ways, a more traditional one where we had the light. So when I say traditional, I mean, kata, kihon, kumite, mm-hmm. um, but still very, very practical. We were sparring. I was sparring from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, and then Greg's class was like w- even more practical. There was less kata. There was um, less line work, way more practical. And then we moved from um, Greg stopped that club and we moved to Joe, who then was doing things a little more traditionally again so it's kind of moved back to that Mm -hmm. but at that point I was still training with Greg because he was doing um Sunday morning classes Mm -hmm. um he invited me to come and train it was kind of like almost a a little bit more informal training with himself Brad and, and anyone else who wanted to be there and it was that that time then during those informal classes where it was gloves on And let's do this, you know, or I would come in with a question, like I'm going to do a kata godan for my next test. And I don't know, I'm going to have to work out some moves for it. And, and he would go through, right. Godan first move. I'm going to show it to you and show you how it works. I'm going to get you to do it on me. I'm going to drill this for like five minutes, drill it, work it. And then right now let's do a little light spa and then throw the technique in five minutes doing that now we're going to spar and you would find an opportunity to throw the technique so in half an hour we'd have that done totally practical and fact and and just really open to having that conversation letting me ask those questions you know, it's, and I've come to find that that's not that, not that common in karate mm. to be able to just ask questions and explore stuff. And granted it was, it was, a, you know, obviously a very small class and that's not available to everyone. And I totally get that. But I think having that um, ability to be able to just like ask questions and work things out in a really speedy way which is quite like Ian Abernathy has done also in some of his sure. seminars. He's, uh, he's, you know him, obviously. Um, it, it's a really qu- quick way to learn something and get it into your head as a student. 
I, the, the idea of taking any material and approaching it in as many different ways as possible right yeah. away and just in, fully integrating it, I think makes all kinds of sense. Mm. Mm. How did you feel when you were told you were, you were going to be testing? Did it feel any different from when you were told prior you would be testing? Yeah, I feel um, cold all over. And <laughs> really? Yeah, cold all okay. over. Wow. Um, bit sick. I instantly, instantly went to the day of the grading and, oh, my God, I'm going to have to do all of this and they're all going to be watching. And I've got to learn all of those cats. I need to revise everything. And three months isn't enough time. And I need to just stop my entire life so that I can just spend all day practicing everything. That's where my mind goes to immediately. Okay. And not irrational at all. No, no, not a bit. <laughs> and so we're about a month into that three month period. Mm -hmm. Have you quit your job and, <laughs> you know, no. told everyone to go away and you're, you're practicing 16 hours a day? No, no, I haven't done any of those things, but I have really concentrated now on practicing on um, practicing kata because that's um, a space we don't, I don't spend a great deal of time on and um, our training is pretty full on. It tends to be quite practical. I know that we're training a lot of what I'm going to need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So the things that I'm concentrating on right now is getting fitness back because I got really fit a couple of months ago for a competition, but I've not been keeping it up as much as I should. Mm -hmm. So I need to get that back because I know it's going to be a you know, an exhausting thing and um, getting back to getting my cat so that I know that I've got those sharp. My, one of my worst fears in the world is standing there in front of a room full of people and drying. I don't know what to do. I don't know what comes next. That's, that's the horror for me. Has, has that ever, has that happened in any nope. of your prior tests? Nope. <laughs> because of that, and only because you answered in that way, I will share um, what I remember is the most terrifying thing leading up to my black, my first black belt test. <laughs> I was, I was confusing halfway through Pinyon, Yodan and Godon. I was starting yeah. with Yodan and ending with Godon <laughs> and it kept happening. And we're like two weeks out from testing and I'm going, <laughs> what is happening? Why is this happening? This, I can't do, <laughs> and I just remember this, this panicky feeling of just, oh, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> what if it happens on the day? Okay. And it, you know, it was, it was one of those that the more you try to force it, the, the worse it got. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I remember the day that it, it, it started happening and I went, okay. I just, I just need to leave. And I just, I stopped. I just went home and it happened a couple more times, but not every time. And I said, all right, this is, I'm overthinking. I'm overthinking this. And on the day of testing, I was fine. Yeah. I mean, it was, my forms were fine. My technique was fine. The things I had control of, I was fine. Mm. It was still difficult. Um, you know, this is about you. So we're not going to go into that, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm curious. This, this preparation stage, cause that's really what we're talking about here is this, mm. this preparation. Have you learned anything about yourself, even in this, in this last month, as you prepare, have there been any realizations, epiphanies, insights, et cetera? I realize that um, I know that a lot of people get to black belt and quit. I've, no, I've, I've heard that that happens. I've seen that happen a couple of times and I'm determined that that won't happen to me. So when I realized like a few years ago that I was in this and I wasn't going to stop, I thought to myself, well, if people quit at first, Dan, I'm not going to stop until I get to at least second. So never had a black belt goal, but I did kind of have a second angle. Okay. 
<laughs> and I don't know how much further I could possibly get given <laughs> given my grand age. I don't know. <laughs> there are, I will guarantee there are people right now all but yelling at the speakers <laughs> because they've got plenty of years on you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. If they want to yell, they can also just send me a message and tell me personally, because that would be great. Just, ty- um, just typing to you in all caps. <laughs> Shut up, Sue, which I get told a lot. Stop <laughs> fussing. Um, no, I think I was quite surprised that the things that have worried me, um, that it's, it's getting things like Kata that are worrying me. I'm surprised that I'm less troubled by the sparring that I'm going to have to do. Um, We took part in a competition in Bournemouth uh, in England um, a couple of months ago. Um, So I'm guessing it was about May. Mm -hmm. And that was the most terrifying, terrifying experience I have ever had. Ever. Worse than any of your testings worse than any of them i mean i literally turned around to leave the room so many times i was so scared and i why didn't you leave the room um what kept pride 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 in front of whom um i wasn't gonna let the the girls and they they were god they were good who were literally kicking my head in i wasn't gonna let them see me leave I was going to see it out because having had my head thoroughly kicked in in the first one, I knew that I wasn't going to die. I knew it was just hurt pride and pain and fear that I was feeling. So I wasn't going to actually leave the room and and they were so good. Um, So yeah, that was genuinely, I've never felt anything like the adrenaline dump that I felt at that moment, stepping onto the mat for the first time, I felt outside of my body and so I guess part of me feels I trained hard for that. I trained really, really hard for that. And we've set up, we set up extra training sessions, extra sparring sessions that still exist. And I know that I train hard and I know that I train with the guys. I know I work hard at those things. So the worst that can happen, the worst that could happen is that I don't do brilliantly. You know, that's, and that's fine. That's fine it depends who they get me to spar with some people will be much better than me stronger faster that's not hard so my job is actually to do what I can do the best that I possibly can do and also as as I said before they they think that I'm ready for it and I know that they wouldn't do that if I wasn't ready they'd be saying you'll do your black belt suit but you're not ready yet it will be next year and I'd be Mm. fine with that that honestly wouldn't bother me. Mm. So, um, that bit, I know I'm going to have to do it and I'm a bit worried about it, but um, it's, it's the other stuff. But yeah, when I really think about it, I do go cold all over. <laughs> so you and I are going to talk again in about six weeks or so. Yeah. What, we'll, we'll be checking. We probably won't be talking as long. Mm-hmm. What do you think you're going to tell me then? What are you hoping just, you're going to tell me? Just before. Yeah. Just before. I hope I'll be telling you. I've practiced hard. I feel like my sparring has gone up another couple of levels and I've been able to master a couple of things that I'm still finding really challenging now. Like what? Oh, takedowns. Okay. Takedowns. I I can do a takedown and I can spar, but I just find it really hard still to get the entry. It's ridiculous. And I keep training it. I just, I just. Are you not getting tight enough? Are you trying to do too far from too far out? Um, I keep at the moment uh, when I'm under pressure, I reach for it rather than get into the right position. And under pressure is when it counts. So I just need to keep, practicing it slow and then going under pressure which is what I'm doing Good. and uh, and they're also patient and we do that a lot in class you know we do it a lot in class it's with it's part of what we do as as part of our regular training is is uh, entry into takedowns and takedowns and then what you do when you get on the ground so it's all there 
um, I just need to drill it and, and practice it at home a lot more than I do, you know, not the cat, you know. If you could leave yourself a message, right? Because later we're going to end up editing this stuff together. So we're going we're gonna to sign off here and you're going to pick it up in, in six weeks. What are, you, what are you telling yourself six weeks? I mean, we talked about what, what you would hope for, but like a direct message, like, like a s- instruction, some kind just of a setup. practice. Okay, stop fussing about it. Just do some practice it's going to be fine. If you've practiced and you've shown them what you can do, you'll be fine. I'm here. I'm glad. (laughs) So am I. It's good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Good. Very, very good. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, this one's going to be short. We're just going okay. to talk for a little bit, but it all falls a pretty simple, single question. Yeah. How are you feeling? Terrified. It's, it's, it's this coming weekend? <laughs> yeah, it's this Sunday. Ooh. It's happening this Sunday. Yeah. So is that five days? One day, thirty five five days. Five days. Five yeah. days. Five days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I go between um, thinking, you know, it is going to be fine. These are people I know. Mm-hmm. They know that I can do this. This is this is going to be fine. It's two and a half hours. It's going to be okay. I've just got to stick through it, remember everything I can and do it. That's that's one thought. And <laughs> that see, is what's the other half? Driven out by <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I'm not. I'm I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna faint. Mm. I'm gonna forget everything. I even went blank on Hey and Showdown this morning. I just like, oh, for goodness sake. I just forgot how to end it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. Have you? <laughs> I've been there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, just, just before, I mean, it was like in the final week, I was blending Yodan and Godan. I'd start yeah. Yodan and end Godan. Yeah. And it was more than once. It was like, okay, no, no, I can't do that. And I do it again. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> So I get it. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. So it's it's not just the it's not just the getting it wrong that worries me. It's what I'll do if I get it wrong. You know, if I get it wrong, will I panic? Will I freeze? Will I just stop? Is that generally you know? how you react to things like no. that? No. Well, kind of yes and no. I mean, that kind of your brain just freezing up mm-hmm. does happen. It happens in sparring sometimes. If I get um, sometimes if I get surprised by something, I can mm. find that happens to me. I just like stop for a second. I shouldn't say that, should I? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I tend to just freeze when, when, uh, things go wrong. So I hope, but that's never happened yet in a grading. Not yet. I mean, I've done a lot of gradings now. I'm not sure how many, um, but I've done, I must've done about seven. Yeah. So I've never yet completely frozen. Is anybody other than you putting pressure on you? Um, I wouldn't say it's pressure. I mean, several of our classes have been devoted to practice Mm -hmm. and revision. So it's there. And quite a lot of us are going through this. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is a reasonable amount of us who are going for, um, for gradings. I actually can't remember how many now, but I think it may be seven of us who are going through at the same time. Um, no, they're all going, there's someone going for third, someone going for second, I think. Um, there so a couple of people going for second, quite a few actually. That's that's the main one going for second, mm. one going for third, and uh, someone going for first Q. Okay. Um, all in the same grading. So yeah, but no, I don't think anyone else is really putting pressure on, as such. <laughs> but that doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make it easier. No. no, it doesn't. But like I say, I've got these two at least two mindsets mm. you know i'm being i'm being conservative when i say i've got those two mindsets i think i've got another three well, what, what <laughs> else are you feeling um, those are probably the loudest voices but what else is, is chiming in um what else is chiming in the fi- the looking forward to it being done that's quite a big one i'm looking i found myself this week thinking you know what this time next week will be done mm-hmm. one way or another 
you know, I'll have done all of this. And if I failed, well, then I'll have to sit here and tell you that I failed. I don't want to have to do that. I really don't want to have to do that. Um, <laughs> so there's some pressure there as well. Um, cause you know, a lot of people know that I'm doing this. So, um, but I think that's always the pressure, isn't it? When you're doing something and a lot of people know it, but everyone, I know that if I actually asked them, they'd all say, well, that's okay. You know, if you don't get there, it's fine. You just redo it. Mm -hmm. Just wait a few months and you'll be fine next time. I know that. And you've probably um, said that. I would say it to anybody. Yeah. But it's different when it's you. It's different when it's you. Yeah. I, I guess that's a lot of ego in there. Just kind of like, I don't want to show myself up. Mm. You know, I don't I don't want to fail um but I, I fail all the time at karate I do it every I do it on a weekly basis and that's fine because that's that's how I learn you know you try you fail you try you fail you just do it over and over again until you get there you know the amount of times I try and do takedowns and simply can't get there and that's that's kind of okay because you know you'll get there in the end and even if under like extreme pressure, you still can't get there, but that still doesn't necessarily matter. But this time you're doing it for something. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for something to be judged, to be examined, to be watched, to be judged on it. It makes it very different, you right. know? So normally I'm just happy to learn, fail, get better. Um, even then though, I do still get very frustrated when things don't go my way, you know, I still go home thinking I can't do this, it's too hard. But doing it for an exam, the pressure is very different. It, it's it's very like um, getting ready for a competition, mm -hmm. the competition that I did. I've only done the one. But, you know, the, I think what you have, what I'm having with this is this kind of this feeling of accelerated learning, like mm -hmm. everything coming together into one point you know, dragging up everything that I've learned yeah. and kind of, as I look back through all the syllabus, because you've got to know all of the syllabus. And it's only then that I kind of realize that how many times my syllabus has changed. Cause mm. I've, I must've been through at least four different, at least four different syllabus by now. So what people are learning in their first year is, is what I learned a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it's very different. I, I would imagine that when you think about all the different things that are going to come up in this exam, yeah, there are some that you're looking at and saying, you know what, this is going to be easier than this. Yeah. Is there one part of it that you're looking at and saying, if I can get through that part, if I can just stumble my way past, if they just don't tell me to leave the floor once I get <laughs> past and I can get through this part, I know I'll be okay. I think, I think the parts for me that, that stress me the most that I'll be glad to get done are the kata and the sparring. Those, those are big parts. Me, those are, yeah, those are big, big parts. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff on, um, on pads, mm -hmm. um, with various different combinations on pads, legs on pads. Um, and that's that's kind of okay. I feel like I can do what what's thrown at me with that. I've done it many times and I feel pretty okay with it. Even if I screw that up, I know that I can then correct it. No, I know that that's not the end of the world. I feel at home with with that. Yeah. Um, but then you're doing it with a partner. So maybe it feels a little bit different. Maybe it still feels a little bit supported. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas... Uh, Kata, that could be anything. It's not just one kata anymore. It could be, it could be quite a lot of them that are thrown right. at you. And theory too. We uh we get uh, theory questions in our mm. in our uh in our grading, and they can be anything. And just well, they'll all be in the syllabus. Right. Um, but they'll they can be thrown at you at any time. And Joe's really good at that. He kind of just th tends to throw something random at you in class in these last few weeks to kind of get you used to the idea of just having to drag something up. Um, there, will the people evaluating you be all people that you know, or are there special guests coming? No, we have not. I don't think we have any special guests. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. No, not that I'm aware of. Um, I think the time we had a special guest, it was Andy Kidd. 
um who came to came to uh evaluate us one year and that was that was very different he's funny he's a really funny guy um but no i think actually it's just greg and joe who are doing it this year okay. yeah so and, and they that's, know you they do so and they're this, gonna push you they're gonna push absolutely they want to yeah. they want this to be a test they want it to be a hard test but also, the way that the, our club does it is you you don't get invited to grade unless you're ready to grade. They don't just have this whole, you know, gradings thing that mm. happen every three months. So um, I know that I'm ready to grade. It just depends on whether I can actually do it all on the day. And whether I can, yeah. But at the moment, I just feel nervous all the time at the moment. <laughs> I believe it. I've been there. I get it. Get it. Yeah. I think you're going to do fine. Do you? Why do you think do. that? Why do you think that? Because the people who are nervous generally prepare. <laughs> they do all they can. And like you said, you've been invited to test because they believe you're ready. Yeah. And so the question is, do you believe you're ready on such a level that you're going to be able to make it happen? I believe that I can complete this test. Mm -hmm. I believe I have a fair shot at completing this test. I have, I go between thinking that the sparring will be too hard and I will fail at it. But I also know that that is irrelevant. If I can actually just go through the sparring and do what I normally do, that that is actually okay mm -hmm. you know i don't have to objectively win everything because that would mean the person sparring against me would effectively lose and that's not right. going to happen you just have to actually demonstrate that you're doing it mm -hmm. i know i'm not going to get killed um so uh, do i think i can do it? i think i should be able to you know i've been working on being fitter again and i have practiced a lot and i've um we have to do this thing of, I'll tell you that in a minute. So do I feel like I can? I do feel like I can, but do I feel like I will actually be a black belt afterwards? I still have a real thing with like, black belt, really? Really? That's a whole other thing to unpack. <laughs> it's, it is. And we've done it a few times on our podcast and, yeah. you know, we've talked to uh, Ken Knight about that as well. He's, he's done some really interesting uh, discussion on his YouTube about what makes a black belt. Mm -hmm. And um, it still doesn't feel real. And, and what's interesting is the other people's reaction to, oh my God, you're going to be a black belt or right, I mustn't mess with you. And that's everyone. Mm -hmm. So strange to me. So strange to me. Um. But yeah, we have to do, um, we have to demonstrate three takedowns, three submissions and three escapes. Okay. And I, I simplify everything down to the smallest way that I can possibly do it. I really do. And this morning, do. Uh, we had, do you, do you do that as well? <laughs> Why make it fancier than it has to be? There's more opportunity for messing it up. Well, you see, I can't remember them. I get, I get really, um, like a lot of people, you you trying to learn something, even though it's something you know, you're trying to memorize it, make sure you don't forget them on the day. Mm -hmm. When invited, you know, step on the mat, please, and show me your submissions. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what are they? I don't know. They could be anything. Um, so I've ended up with this thing where my escape send, I've written them down because uh, I have to mm -hmm. shrimp turnover pass. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh, shrimp turnover. I'll pass on that. <laughs> it does sound terrible. That's something Sounds I would awful. Want to eat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, and I've worked out my submissions with, you know, silly little dance. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So I've I've just done this thing with just making it all really simple as much as I can so that I've got them. Do you do you yeah. want to hear my prediction? Yes. Five minutes in, you'll be fine. You think I do because makes... I think you're going to, because I think at some point you're going to get out there and you're going to realize it's really not that different from a class. It's just a long class. Yeah. It's a long class with uh, broader things that you're covering. 
and there's a result. But like you said, you know this stuff. You've been training this stuff. They're trying to help you. They're preparing you. Yes. And the fact that, you know, I don't think I've known anybody who hasn't been nervous for their black belt test ever. No. To care. Oh, so yeah. I think I think you'll be fine. I do. <laughs> That's really nice of you to say that. That's really nice of you to say that. I'm I'm still not completely convinced, but you're you're making you're <laughs> making okay. the, you're making the voice in my head that says you know what, it'll be okay. It's two and a half hours. You've done this. You've done it over and over again. Um, yeah, that you know that that voice is definitely in there. So I'm trying to listen to that a little bit more. You know, that just and I think you're right. There will be a point. You know, I'll be going up until that class shaking all over, and then. 10 minutes in, I'll be thinking, oh, this is okay. Try to enjoy it. It's something <laughs> you're going to remember for the rest of your life. So try to try to have some fun in there. Yeah. And the thing is, of course, everyone's going through it. Yeah. Everyone in that room is going to be going through it as well. And I guess I'd love to know. I mean, I wonder what the instructors are feeling. I mean, they're putting you through it and they want you to pass. Mm -hmm. So what are you going through as an instructor taking through your students? That must be really challenging for them. It can be. It must be. If you've got someone you know they've worked and you know they've tried and and they're just not getting there mm -hmm. in, in the test, that must be really tough to... Every school has a little bit of a different philosophy on what a black belt means and thus what the test means. Yeah. So those, those thoughts are can vary a bit but um you know i don't i don't want to speculate what what your instructors oh. look at it as but i think you're right it's it is challenging because you're you're pushing people you know you, you've got a responsibility to help them reach that next level and yeah. sometimes that requires a push mm. and not everyone likes to be pushed no no, no, they don't. But I suppose, yeah, they've got to do it. And you just, it wouldn't be a test if not, you know. And I think that's the thing. If when people say to me, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. You know, you can do it. I just think, yeah, but it's still a test. Mm -hmm. It's still a test. It, it has to be. It has to be something that's hard and something that's really going to put you through it. Or, um, or it wouldn't be a fair test. Mm -hmm. And I have... No doubt that those two are going to make us work mm -hmm. really and hard. And you will mess you will mess things up. You will probably forget something. You'll probably do something wrong in a dumb way that you've never messed up before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I probably will. Because I haven't participated in or seen a black belt test where that didn't happen for every single person. Really? Yeah. Oh, I messed that up. I never messed that up. Well, yeah, it's. I suppose it's a little bit akin to you doing the perfect thing, the perfect work in line all the time or the perfect takedown over and over and over again. And your teacher turns around and looks at you and you instantly fall on your ass. Yep, exactly. It's okay. Eat that. It's okay. Yeah, you instantly fall over. Joe did that the other week. We were um, practicing defending. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing... Um, single legs and somebody taking your leg and then sort of reaching mm -hmm. over and taking their belt and then bringing them over backwards with you and rolling and of course I was doing it over and over again beautifully and then Joe decided to film and he pointed the camera at me and then it just just all completely stopped and it just ended up just falling over and it's just I can imagine that our test will be a lot like that mm -hmm. so I know we're going to talk again next week after yes but I, I think the last thing you've probably thought about, you said it's a Sunday test. So that gives you Saturday to kind of last minute prepare, whatever that looks like, you know, for some people it might involve food or sleep or going, doing anything that distracts them. Mm. What's your Saturday going to look like? Um, my Saturday is, is actually going to be, um, I, I have uh, a relative that I care for. And mm -hmm. so um, that's my Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
So my Saturday night, my my Saturday morning will probably be some fitness and some practice. I'll probably just run through. I'm I'm trying like every other day to just run through every single kata. Yeah. So just just because I find that helps me in my sparring as well. It kind of makes me remember that there are angles and and things to do. You know, just kind of like get that in there. So I'll probably do that in the morning and um and then do something, um, do my family stuff in the afternoon and then try and drink a lot in the evening of water, not not beer, water. <laughs> <laughs> I find I work really much better if I get myself, if I really top myself up on water the day before something um, so that I sleep really well. I'll try and get a, a decent night's sleep if I can. And, you know, I'll try and just get some light exercise in there, maybe do a karate-based um HIOT you know yeah. um thing there won't be any point I just run through things to get loose and I'll probably do the same thing on Sunday morning mm -hmm. to be honest what, just what like time of day run. is the test uh it's at five in the afternoon so it's from oh, five okay. till seven thirty okay. yeah because our normal class is on a Sunday night oh. so they're actually bringing the class forward so that the class is actually taking part in part of the grading oh that's cool so yeah so they're going to do all the really tough all the pads and the, everything is going to happen in the first hour and then all the really physical stuff like the sparring is going to happen all the way at the end when we're exhausted yep. yeah they want to see if we can do it if we've got enough guts to keep going i know that's what they want you're gonna do great <laughs> you're gonna do great I'm just going to record you saying that on my phone so I can listen to That's it later. That's fine. Yeah, you're grab your great. phone. I'll say it you're right gonna now. You're going to do great now. I have, I have no doubt that you will do great. Yeah, I'm sure that everyone who listens to this will say, yeah, that's like me. Only I was worse. And the amount of people who tell me they're thrown up in their black belt test. I've Why? What I've is that it. all about? Why? Is that just a mixture of exhaustion and stress? Uh, usually that comes from people who, in my experience, didn't sleep well or didn't hydrate, right? The things that were in their control leading up to it, they yeah. didn't do them. Okay. Right. Or it's really, really hot. Yeah. I've seen tests like that. Yeah. It won't be really, really hot here. I'm coming into colder weather now. Well, it shouldn't be anyway. It might be, but. We don't have a big dojo, so but I instantly turn into a tomato as soon as I get really, really hot anyway. So all my grading pictures will be everyone looking proud. Perfect. A, I look forward to seeing them. A, a little tomato standing <laughs> in the middle of all of them. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, before we cut, what do you right now want to say to you next week? I want to be saying well done, well done for sticking to it and going through it and well done on passing. That's what I want to be saying. I want to, I want to know that I did well. More than anything, I want to know I did well. <laughs> What were your first impressions of Sue when she, when you, when you started working with her? Right. So the first time I met Sue was she came to train with us um, when Greg came to train with us. So I was saying before about Greg um, um, as an instructor, closed his club, came to train with us and he brought some students with him and Sue was one of them. And um I loved her straight away. She was such a lovely, lovely lady and um, clearly took her training seriously. At this point, she was a yellow belt. So I think she was on her, if I'm right in saying, I think she was on her third or fourth belt at this point, depending on what their belt system was. Um, and she she was invested, she was heavily invested um in martial arts beyond the physical training. You know, she was interested in, in reading what people had to say and going and meeting new people. And I mean, you could tell that just from, from her um, contribution 
to the conversation on Karate podcast is that it's not just it's not just Greg, it's Greg and Sue. They they're they're a fantastic partnership. They can take karate from different perspectives, the different grades, and they have slightly different karate backgrounds, but both their voices are valid. So I'm always interested in talking to Sue about what she thinks of karate and what she thinks about what we do. And she's progressed perfectly to the grade that she is now. So she's a first Q now. Um, and there's, there are so many examples I can give of the kind of martial artist she is, is that we didn't even have to go and say to her, go and train with other people. She was doing it. She was off. She was going and she does online training. She goes to seminars and trains with people, whether, you know, there might be examples where me and Greg can't go, but she'll go anyway. You know, she, she's um, not walking in our shadow. Yeah, she's not you afraid know, to be no, her own martial artist. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, she might say that she is. she go, oh, I'm terrified. She'll do it anyway. Like we, we did a competition uh, earlier this year. We did the um, Applied Karate Academy um, Kumite competition. And she was going, oh, I'm terrified. Absolutely terrified. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. And she was like that. All the time leading up to it, all the way there in the journey, I'm terrified. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to get my head kicked in. I don't know. And then as soon as, as soon as the ref said Hashime, whoom, she was in the zone. And she did an amazing job. And that just that is just a, a living embodiment of what martial arts can do for people. It's that little, it's that little push from behind. For people that go, I'm terrified. That's the difference with her. She just she can she can say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And then she does it, <laughs> which is which is in itself is inspiring. As opposed to yeah, it's great to see people go, yeah, yeah, I'm well up for it. Let's do it, and they go in for it. But for someone that feels that way but does it anyway, I mean that shows real strength. Yeah. And no, I have I, I I have no doubt that if she keeps progressing that the way that she is, that she is, she is going to have a huge effect on the martial art community. We're going to edit this piece into some other things that we're doing with her. So she won't hear your words until after, certainly after her test, you know, yeah, we're, we're, I'm sure we're both hopeful that she completes it, passes, et cetera, but we don't, we don't know, you know, this is not guaranteed. But on the other side, say something to her. What would you say to Sue? What would you want Sue to hear from you, you know, that you don't mind sharing with the rest of the world a few months from now? I'd say to her, you, you are a representative of the martial art world and what you've done for the for the world so far is levels above what everyone else is doing or the certainly the the general populace of the martial art community keep doing what you're doing keep growing at the rate that you are keep smiling that always helps and um continue to inspire continue to educate and when you when you get to that point that you that you uh decide to become a teacher if you want to become a teacher is to keep that always keep that with you is that there's always more for me to learn and there's always more people to interview there's there's more wisdom that either i can put on the world or that i can go and talk to people that can also do that so she's contributing in multiple ways and I'm quite envious, to be honest. I think I think um, she's gonna she's gonna have, regardless of grade. I think she's she's gonna have a tremendous effect on the martial art world. So you just got your first dan. I did. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm gonna show it to you. <laughs> really exciting. Let's it's see. So it. Really exciting. I never thought that this. Here you go. It is. 
Do you, ever, do you ever think this is going to happen? No, no, because when I when I started, like I've told you and told loads of people, I never, never even aimed for it. Hmm. I just wanted to do it and enjoy myself. So this was never even. It only started to be on the horizon, like in the last couple of years. And I thought, well, if I do it, I just I don't want to stop. If I was ever, and I don't think I ever told you this, but I thought to myself, I know some people stop at Black Belt. So I thought, if I'm never going to go there, if I'm going to aim for anything, I'll aim for second down. I will never aim for one. That's fair. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm, I'm a bit shocked, to be fair, because it's grind to a halt in my kata twice. Hmm. <laughs> Stood there for what felt like half an hour. How, how did that feel when that, when that happened? I started laughing. I don't know if you could see that, but I started to get this huge smile on my face because I was thinking, I can't believe this happened. Not at the bits where I normally get stuck, but at a totally different bit because I remembered the key eyes. Normally I forget them all. So I okay. think I was probably so flummoxed that I got those bit right that I just then went and forgot the rest. Yeah. But see, I didn't actually forget it. I just ground to a halt and stood there. And then I like, I know this bit. And then I carried on, mm. but that's okay. Got there, got there in the end. So what was going through your mind when, when we said, right, the grading's done, me and Greg are going to have a chat? Ah, relief, what? relief, relief. Done, finished, over. Can do no more. Hmm. Just, you know, but I, all I wanted at the beginning was to do a good job. You know, pass, fail, I wanted to do a decent job. I wanted to come away from it feeling proud of myself. That's it. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to feel proud of myself. No matter all the things that I couldn't control, I knew there'd be all sorts of things I wouldn't be able to control. But I wanted to think afterwards that I'd done a good job. Yeah. Did I do a good job? You did a fantastic job. Otherwise, we wouldn't have promoted you. Yeah, I thought I did a good job as well. Good. Well, reasonably. You know, yeah. a few things that I, I always wish I could do more. I know I'm going to go home and start picking it apart. So just so from this moment now, what, yeah. what, what could you work on from, from what you said, from just, I, just from that? I idea. know where I'm weak. I know where I'm weak. Mm. I know that in stand-up sparring, I feel okay. I know that on the ground, I can kind of cope. Mm. I can do takedowns, but for me, it's always about the transition from one into the next. That's where my confidence is gone. Not, not gone, but that's where I want to, that's something that I want to like work on and find the confidence. I think it might even just be that I've got injured twice doing that. Yeah. You know, just something is, is sat there just slowing me down, but that's okay. That's okay, it's not a, not a race. Hmm. So how are you feeling running up to, to today? So the, the, the 24 hours before the grading? I've been all the way through. I've been all the way through every feeling. So it's 24 hours. Um, yesterday, I wasn't too bad. Um, the night before that, I was terrified. And then I had a big old moment of clarity that everyone was gonna be going through the same thing. <laughs> and that everyone would be nervous. And um, I knew I would be nervous. Um, but I also was convinced that I had to be perfect. And that's always what is nagging away at me that I have to be perfect in order to be um, to be good at anything. That I can't be flawed. Even though I would say to anybody else on the planet, it's fine to be flawed. It's mm. completely okay. Yeah. But I, I can't. I, that's not okay for me. So, but then it hit me last night and this morning that that was completely fine. Mm. It was okay. And I relaxed completely until I did a stupid thing and I looked back at training videos that we'd been doing in the last couple of weeks and shot my confidence. So I showed up a little bit stressed, but I was just trying to prepare. But, you know, sometimes it's not the greatest idea to do that. <laughs>
Um, the world is a lot less stressful this mm. week. <laughs> I I do actually. Um, you know, all joking aside, uh, yeah. I'll joke about it later. But it, uh, oh, there there is a huge sense of relief that this mm-hmm. is that the exam is over. But um, there's something I wasn't expecting, and that is uh, just a really nice feeling of freedom. Say more. There's a, there's a there's a long time before I have to have to do another grade like this Mm. um anything else that i do now is by choice and Mm -hmm. all the time that was taken up by the the mental space that was being taken up by thinking about this and worrying about this and practicing about this has all just now gone it's it's done and um and i can now i i feel like i could before obviously i could Mm. but i feel like i now have the a bit of space again to go back to um doing weapons and um, exploring some different things that I was doing before, but now there's a little bit more space around that again. Mm. So it's just, I caught myself um, last night in, in class um, or the night before getting frustrated with myself that I couldn't, I couldn't get something. And I, I suddenly go, Oh my God, I have, I have time. I have time again. Stop, stop this. Wait, wait, you mean, you mean a black belt doesn't know everything? You didn't put that <laughs> on and suddenly everything changed. It got no, easier actually, and, it and there was some odd osmosis occurring. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not being truthful with you. I mean, what happened was I got the black belt handbook and it told me to not mention that the miracle okay. would happen. All right, we'll have to um, edit this part out. Then. We'll have to edit this part out. The miracle did happen. I put on the black belt and I was enlightened. I was enlightened by the secret yeah. meaning of every single kata. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it happened. If it only. Really right? <laughs> if only. So you 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 said something and I want to I want to poke at that for a second. Okay. You feel like you have some freedom back. Mm. Which obviously you had the freedom before, right? You you could yes. have not done this. Oh yeah. It, it it was a choice. We know it was a choice. Yes. And so it being that big and having that much weight on you before mm. and that weight being gone begs a rather mm. important question. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it is. I Why? think it is. Because I think it's good to go through things sometimes, even if you don't want to, even if you don't need to. It, As you say, it is a choice. And the choice is to not do it. You d- you certainly don't have to do it. Um, people would ask why, mm-hmm. but I don't think there'd be any particular judgment around that. But I think it is good to put yourself through things that are hard sometimes and choose to go through that barrier. And because what you get to at the other, other side is the knowledge that you tried. You tried mm-hmm. really hard and you went through. And the work that you put through on the other side, I think I, I mentioned before that there's this kind of, accelerated learning that you go through you this focused revision of everything that you know and I think that's kind of good for you Mm. and it's good to then if you don't have that also if you don't sometimes have the pressure of going through something then you don't necessarily appreciate the space that arrives on the other side yeah you know so I think I think it's good in life generally to go through difficult things. Much as I whine and complain and go on and don't want to do it and generally whinge about things and you know be a complete wuss, <laughs> which I do a lot. Um, and everyone feels it. Everyone feels the stress. Everyone feels the struggle. But I'm usually glad after I've done things. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a, some knowledge beforehand that I will be glad to have done it. And that's one of the things that kind of pulls you through. One of the things I find interesting about what a black belt means, because it's not universal. It's different, not only in every style, every system, but every school, it's always a little bit different. And so that's why when when people get bent out of shape about, you know, time it takes or or anything, just because the color is the same doesn't mean they're equivalent. Yeah. But one thing that is almost universal is what you're talking about there, that you went through something really challenging. 
yeah. that you knew it was going to be really challenging. You didn't know exactly what it might be, but you knew it required a lot of preparation. And yeah. I think it's those two elements that become so important. It's the preparation because you put in so much time because this meant so much to you. And now on the other side of that really challenging thing, you obviously met that challenge and it's what everything prior to the test, not just the preparation for the test, but every class you've ever done, every thought you've ever had, every punch you've ever thrown leading up to it as the investment into what that belt means. Yeah. And it's celebrated and tested and codified into who you are through that test. Mm -hmm. I I tested at 16. I still think about that event. It Do is really? still a, a uh, road sign for my life. I still reflect back on it and say, I did that. I can do this. Mm. I did these difficult, challenging, overwhelming things that, frankly, some of them no one knows about except the people who were there. Yeah. And I can look at what I'm doing now, whether it's martial arts or not, and say, I've got this. And whether it's expressed as such or not, I think that's where the true value of a black belt comes in. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Was the test as difficult as you expected? More difficult, less difficult? Um, I, I really hesitate to say this, but it was less difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I, I really hesitate to say that. Um, I want to say it was the most brutal experience of my whole life, but it it, it wasn't. It was, um, they they included the class in the first half. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, you know, because everyone was really tense, but, you know, we it was run kind of as a class. Um, and, and they were coming around with their clipboards and everything. They were watching everything they did, but there was an element of, okay yeah we know this this is this feels familiar you know we're mm. working out with our partners on the pads and then they're coming over and taking over the pads and they're you know coming to sort things out look at what they want to learn even even you know once or twice actually throwing the shots themselves so they could give you a test on holding the pads right you know so this this that all felt kind of familiar and stuff that we'd done before um, I was really nervous about the kata. I was really nervous about the sparring, the, mm -hmm. the hugest bits of it. Yeah. Yeah. How did and those I was, go? Um, the kata, uh, that was that was really funny how that went because I'd practiced Kankudai a lot to make mm. sure. And there were two places that I normally got stuck. Um, and I always forgot the first kiai. Always. Every time. And I think what happened was I was so astounded that I remembered the first ki that I instantly dried in two totally different places and just ground to a halt so I'm then... laughing because I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about oh my god I got that part huh. wait what next <laughs> that's not the end what am I supposed to do now <laughs> yes um yeah so that was uh, so I stood there and uh Kanku dies a reasonably long casa and I don't do it massively fast and uh there were two other people doing their, or one other person doing their kata at the same time. I can't even remember now. Um, and they were done. So the whole room was watching me stand there going, what's the next move? I, but the next move did come. And I just, I start, I almost started giggling at one point. I stood there, the whole room watching me, hands in the air, facing the side of the room going, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I nearly started laughing right there. Yes, it's just like, I can't believe this has happened to me. Um, but I did remember it and I did finish it. And they were, you know, they were good. They just waited, waited mm -hmm. it out for me to finish. They knew that I knew it. So, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing bad happened. I, I did know it. And um, Heian Shodan was the one that came up for the Heians. And um, and then I had to do Basai Dai as well. And that was, that was fine. I knew that one. That was, that was in there. So that was great. I went through that. 
cool. and they'd uh, they'd written down um i think they had something like eight rounds of sparring um put in so two of all two minutes of two times two minutes of all in to grappling same for grappling same for striking um same for groundwork mm. and i thought that that would be you know i'd been training for that i'd been going out for bike rides i'd started running again even mm. though i hate running um because i knew i was going to be really really hard mm -hmm. um but ultimately we started off with two rounds of all in because what they wanted again was to see they wanted to see what you got. They wanted to see if you could and then. And they said at the beginning, we want to see a mixture, try and put everything into it. So, um, so for some of us, we did the two, lots of two minutes of all in and I saw what they needed. So we didn't need to go further. So it's like, Oh my God, the relief, the relief at that moment. It was like, no, we've seen what you've, we've seen what you got. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Huge huge awesome. really really awesome so yeah that was it and then it was just like oh my god just eat sweets now and <laughs> what was your anxiety level like going in most people like you know you, you bow in and you're like i've got this i've got this and it seems like it gets away from them pretty quickly and then it spikes and then you realize you can't hang out there and it starts to come down a little bit but from from talking to people there's a point where they go you know what, I'm going to be okay, that they recognize someone there, they're going to be okay. And I think we talked about this last time. Yeah. You know, we, we talked about specifically that you were concerned about your forms and your sparring, but this is a little bit different version of the question. What was that point where you said, I've got this? Starting the class with my sparring partner, with my partner, um, doing pads that was the first thing we had throwing combinations on the pads and I looked at her and smiled and I said oh this is going to be okay isn't it we're gonna we'll get through this won't we and she said yeah we'll get through this yeah. it's like okay so it spiked um just um when I when I got confused about whether we were changing partners or not because I find that a little distressing when I'm not mm. entirely sure what's going to happen. So, <gasps> sudden panic that I've just derailed everything, you know, but I think it's normal in that situation mm -hmm. to be a little bit panicky. Um, it spiked right. I, I had no trouble with demonstrating takedown, demonstrating. Um, I'm fine with that. I, I practiced. I knew what I was doing. I knew I understood what I was doing with the submissions, the takedowns and the escapes. Mm. I was confident with that. I was confident with my bunkai and, and explaining it. That was that was all good. So it spiked again for the um, kata, big yeah. time. That was heart hammering, you know, step out onto the mat thinking, oh my God. And um, absolutely for the sparring as well. I was, I was nervous there. Sure. Yeah. I think it was last time you were on, I asked you, what would you tell future you? Mm -hmm. So let's do the opposite. Let's go back to the the day that you were told you were going to test. Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell that you now that you've been through this experience? Um, <coughs> practice earlier. Mm. I got so freaked out by the um, pressure of everything, by the enormity in my head that I kind of froze mm. for a couple of weeks and um, I just went into panic and I wish that I could have gone back and told myself to chill and go through the syllabus a lot quicker and maybe iron out some of the stuff that I was worried about a lot sooner yeah. that you, would have been sensible do you think that would have changed your anxiety going into it it might not have changed my anxiety actually going into it, but it might have changed my anxiety in the month going up to it. Okay. I might have felt more chill if I'd have addressed, if I'd have realized. I think that um, sometimes you get very nervous about something and it, it builds up in your head. And um, my experience can be that I almost stop mm. and I, I disengage from what I'm thinking and feeling because it's it just feels too much. And, and I know it's, you know, that's, it, it's just a black belt grading. It sounds ridiculous to be that, that tense about it, but 
even so it's still there and um for me that would have been more helpful be to really understand that I was going into panic Mm. then and actually try and address it much much quicker and actually get that syllabus out rather than going I can't look at it I can't Mm. look at that it's too scary which is ridiculous but deal with it a lot quicker it's usually good advice for me anyway (laughs) now of course we'll have people watching listening to this that have been through a black belt Mm. testing but others who haven't and so one of my hopes as we put this together was that it it might offer something for them Mm. you know the idea that they're not the only person to have had the feelings that they're likely to have but what might you say to those people I'd, I would say, don't worry about being nervous. It's expected. It's expected. Everyone has been through this. Everyone who's testing you has been through this. And they expect you to be nervous. And they want you to be a bit nervous, but they don't want you to be so nervous you can't function because that doesn't serve anybody. But I think actually if you're in an organization where they want you to be so terrified you can't function, I'd consider whether you're in a good organization, to be fair. <laughs> um it's supposed to be hard, but if they've yeah. invited you to grade and it's not just going on a calendar of like every three months kind of thing, if they've been invited to grade, then they know that you're ready for that mm-hmm. and they want you to succeed. They want you to move on to the next level because the grading in my mind is just, um, it, it's just a, a checkpoint. It's just saying, okay, we're just formalizing this. You know this material. You've already moving through. You're ready for the next, the next level. You know, it's just saying you're ready to to learn additional material. So you're going to be nervous, and that's all right. But also, if it's what you want, just go for it. You seriously just go for it. Because I think so many people consider that a black belt. And I do this all the time, and I know I said it to you, that a black belt looks a certain way, it sounds a certain way, is a certain age. It's, yeah. you know, it is rubbish. And we, if, I think we oh, form that idea of what a black belt is Yeah. the first time we experience one. And they mm. are so much further than we are. Mm. But we normalize our own actions. You know, all that hard work and that very small incremental progress that is quite real because it doesn't happen in these big leaps and bounds. We, I think we continue to look at the, that, that gap, that delta between where we were and where black belts are, mm-hmm. and we miss the fact that we're moving closer. Yes. So we keep saying, well, you know, they were so far ahead of me. They're so far ahead of me now when... No, you've caught up to some degree. Mm. Yeah. And it's also as if, as if black belt is the only goal. It's Mm. really not. It's really, hopefully not, really not. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that at all. That black belt should be the only goal because the, the, um, that feeling of freedom that I've got right now is simply about there being space now for me to not have to worry about another grading for a little while. That's it. That's all it is. I had that freedom before and I was doing this. Like a year ago, I wasn't even considering grading. It wasn't even on my horizon. I wasn't interested in looking for my black belt. That fun, that freedom, that experimentation of uh, just doing what you want to do, finding out different styles, cross-training, putting yourself through stuff, working hard, finally, finally, finally freaking figuring out why you're getting a takedown wrong and then doing it right. That's for me, that's the delight. That's where the fun is. So what's going to change now? Is anything going to change in, in what or how you train? No. No, I'll go back to doing what I'm doing. Uh, um, I'll go back to um, some weapons training. I'll go back to uh, hopefully have some time to take up a little bit of jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I'll have time for this kind of stuff again. Cool. Um. Not that all of my time was taken up with preparation for the grading, but but enough of it. There'll be some, yeah. maybe maybe some space for a little bit more sure. in there. 
Yeah. But I just, um, I love it when the pressure of something is finished because the, the delight that I get from, Oh, there's space again. I can just do this for kicks, literally for kicks <laughs> again. That's so nice. And it feels a bit like being just like back at the beginning again, you know, there's a little bit of space to explore now. I want to give an absolute huge shout out and thank you to Sue Roberts for her generosity with her time and her openness about her journey. When we set out to do this, it was something Andrew and I had a long conversation, several conversations about, because we believed that this story would be incredibly relatable. And I think it comes through that way. Whether you've been training for six months or 60 years, you likely see some of yourself in Sue. I think the world of her. And I'm just so proud of her trust in us. I guess that's the best way to put it. The fact that what we've put together is so trustworthy that she was willing to share and to the others involved in her process and their willingness to share, thank you. So to the audience also, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs>